Hello everyone. Lately I've been really into collecting and playing old retro video game ROMs, and this is all thanks to a program called RetroArc. RetroArc serves as an emulator for a whole host of different types of consoles, and it also acts as kind of a launcher for all your games, so you have an easy way to organize and select what games you want to play. It's been a long time since I've last toyed around with emulators, and I stopped playing around with them for a good reason. In the past, they've always been so clunky, and uh, emulation has always been very uh, kind of janky, and old school emulators always had very bizarre keyboard layouts where they would have you pushing things like Z and X, say in order to use the A and B buttons on a classic NES controller, but I must say, emulators have come a long way, and RetroArc really uh, surprised me. And it's currently my number one go-to place to play any of my retro ROMs. So you can see in my collection over here I have some Atari games, Game Gear games, Game Boy Advance, Game Boy Color, Nintendo 64 games, even Nintendo DS games. All of these ROMs are going to work pretty seamlessly with uh, RetroArc. It's just a matter of getting it set up, and uh, I just wanted to show you guys that process here today. So you can turn any of your modern desktop PCs into a retro gaming machine. So first of all, we need to get the RetroArc software. Let's open up our browser here, and it's just a matter of doing a quick Google search. Should be the first one on the list, I believe. This is their landing page, but I think we can just go to Downloads and get the latest version of RetroArc. So inside their stable build folder, let's just grab the latest one, which happens to be 1.3.6. Go into Windows. 64-bit is fine. And let's grab the one that has the uh, larger file size. I think this is the correct one. And wait for that to download. Should take about two minutes. So we'll be right back. So I already have the RetroArc files in my collection folder here, but I'm going to actually delete these just so I can show you guys how it starts up for the first time. I'll copy the RetroArc file that I just downloaded into this folder. So this is a 7-zip file. You need either a WinRAR or 7-zip to actually extract it. We're going to use WinRAR to extract it into its own folder here. Okay, and now that's done, we will have a RetroArc folder here. Now inside of here we'll find an executable. You can go ahead and make a desktop shortcut to this if you want, just to make it easier. So you don't have to go digging into this folder every time you want to launch it. But uh, from here we can just double click and make sure we run it. And we'll get a little window here for uh, RetroArc. Now, this does work with a keyboard and mouse, but it's very much optimized for use with a gamepad. So instead of this mouse here, I'm actually just going to switch to my wired Logitech gamepad. This is the Logitech F310, but it should work just fine with any old uh, gamepad, regardless of whether it's a Xbox 360 controller, an Xbox One controller, or any other kind of a third-party controller you want to hook up to your PC. So first things first, let's go over one into settings and select video and make this full screen. Let's turn that on. This will give us a much better picture of uh, what we're working with here. Everything else, I believe we can just use um, whatever it's set to by default. We're not going to go digging into that. And also inside settings, we're going to want to go to input and make sure we have a menu toggle gamepad combo set in here. By default, it's set to none, but uh, we can change that to any combination of buttons on our gamepad to help us jump back to the main menu if we're ever in the middle of a game. This is also important for using uh, save states or loading save states. And I think I'm going to stick to the L3 and R3. So this would mean that anytime we push down the uh, left and the right stick at the same time, 
we'll be able to jump back to the main menu and either select another game or load or save a save state. So next we want to go to the main menu here and go to the online updater. And inside core updater, we're going to be able to choose exactly what emulators we want to get in order to run the games inside of our collection. So on my second monitor over here, I can see that I have an Atari 600 collection of ROMs, so let's find something for that. Atari 2600 Stella. This uh, emulator should work just fine. So it's going to go ahead and download that for us. Continuing on, we have a Game Gear collection, so let's find something for that. Uh, here are a few. Sega MS GG for Game Gear. That seems to be the only one for the uh, Game Gear, so let's select that one. We also have a Game Boy Advanced. Now there's a few emulators here for Game Boy Advance. These are all different emulators, and you might find that some of them actually do not work. You might attempt to launch a game with one of these emulators, and it could possibly just show a black screen with a bunch of uh, nothing. So this can take some uh, trial and error. Let's go ahead and just grab the first one, the GPSP, and later on we'll have to test it to see if it even works. So Game Boy Color, I have tried the EMUX emulator before, and it has not worked for me, so I'm going to pick anything but that. Maybe this Gambat emulator uh, could work better. And this one also covers the uh, Game Boy as well as Game Boy Color, so we don't have to worry about finding two different emulators for that. Next is Nintendo 64. This is also a mixed bag of uh, emulators here. Some games might work better on different emulators, you just really don't know until you try them out. I'm going to stick with the Muppin 64, just because I've had uh, good luck with that in the past. And for Nintendo DS, we only have one option here, so let's pick that one. We also need a NES emulator. Once again, I'm going to stay away from the EMUX one. It's never worked for me. Instead, let's try Quickness. Sega Genesis, I, I believe that might be the 32X. I'll try this uh, Pico Drive emulator and see if that works. Also need a SNES emulator. There are a ton of these available. Uh, this one looks simple enough. Let's try this one. And last but not least, we have a Turbo Graphics. I believe that's also known as the uh, PC Engine. Uh, let's try this one, the uh, Super Graphics one. Okay, and that should be all the cores that we need to run any of the games in our collection. Now it's really just a matter of adding the content. So we can uh, do that over here by importing content. We have to find our directory, which is uh, located in E. Retro ROM collection. And this is by far the most tedious and longest process of the entire thing. It's just a matter of going to each of these folders and selecting scan. And you can see at the bottom it's going to scan all of the ROMs and add them into RetroArch. It's not going to take long for the Atari games, but for the bigger games like the SNES or the Sega ROMs it might take a lot longer, so I'm going to keep plugging away at this and we'll get right back to it once I have all of my game directories scanned. So one thing worth pointing out is that if you do attempt to scan a directory and it either says uh, nothing available or it won't let you scan it, there's a good chance the reason is because you don't have a appropriate emulator installed onto RetroArch. So you may need to go and either uh, pick a different emulator if you do have one and it's just not working right, or maybe you don't have an emulator installed at all, so make sure you keep that in mind. I really like this user interface. It heavily reminds me of like the old uh, PlayStation 3 kind of a dashboard. It looks very sleek and modern. Okay, directory finished. We have all our ROMs scanned into RetroArch. Altogether, it took about 20 minutes just to uh, scan all of these ROM directories, but now all that's left is to try each of the games and make sure they work 
as they should. And you can see that RetroArch has automatically categorized and sorted all of our ROMs into uh, their own categories, split by console type. And they each have their own little icon, which is kind of cool. So let's start from the right and uh, go left, I guess. This is the Sega Mega Drive collection. I really don't know which of these are good or bad. Before we do anything, let's go ahead and save our current config. This will make sure that if the RetroArch program crashes for whatever reason, that we will still uh, keep our settings. Okay, so now back to Sega Mega Drive. Let's grab um, Blade Master. And we should be using the either Pico Drive or Genesis Plus should work fine. They both list uh, Mega Drive. Let's try uh, Genesis Plus first. And uh, okay, well, we got a splash screen. We've got sound. Okay, controls seem to work fine. I'm not gonna dive too deep into this game because I have so many other ones to check out. But uh, at any time we should be able to push the left and right stick in, as we already have set. And that will bring us right back to the main menu, where we can uh, close the game. And pick something else. But uh, let's try uh, Master System Mark III. I'm not sure why this one game happens to be in a different category. But uh, let's go ahead and give this a try. And uh, hmm, we got a black screen. It hasn't completely crashed since we can always uh, jump back to the, uh, the menu by pushing the sticks in, but I'm not sure why this uh, particular emulator is not working properly. So let's close that. And I'll just have to keep in mind that uh, Master System Mark III the emulator might be having some problems, and uh, I might have to find a different emulator for that. Moving on to the Game Gear... Uh, let's play some Alien Syndrome. We only have one emulator that uh, supports the Game Gear, so that'll have to do. All right, yeah, this seems to work fine. Yep. Uh, there's a map on that button. You kind of just have to push buttons and actually see what they do. I don't think there's any, like, defined uh, key, key layout or button layout for any games or anything like that. So in the... Uh, menu when you push the two sticks down. You can also save save states and load from save states. And there's also options for cheats or uh, you can tweak the graphics settings or anything like that in here as well. Let's move on to the 32X. Let's try some uh, Doom. What are we doing? The uh, 32X. So let's uh, pick the pick Pico Drive. And this should be Doom. Okay. Wow, look at that cropping on the uh, image. <laughs> it's crazy that the Sega 32X had to reduce the graphics so harshly just to get it to run on their system. There's also a few things missing from this scene, like the uh, two pillars that are on the sides. They really had to take a lot out of this just to get it to run, it appears. It seems to run fine though, so I'm gonna say the emulator is working. Moving on to Super Nintendo. Let's try some bonkers. We only have one emulator for that. Yep, yep, this appears to be working as well. Good enough for me. On to the NES. Yep, looks perfectly fine to me. On to the next. Now the 3DS is a little bit strange because it has a touch screen, 
but I'll try and explain exactly how that works here in a uh, second. So you can see we have a split screen here. Top of the DS and the bottom. And you might be thinking, how in the earth do we interact with the bottom screen? Well, we can take our mouse here, and you see we have a little uh, crosshair. We can use this to interact with the screen. But one really cool thing that I've discovered is that if you're using a DualShock 4 controller for the PlayStation 4, and you have that connected up to your television or your computer, you can actually use the touchpad on the DS4 to interact with the bottom screen here, so it works out very well. I don't have my DualShock 4 connected at the moment, so I can't really demonstrate that, but you'll just have to take my word for it. So the Nintendo 64 is kind of a mixed bag. Some of these games might work, some of them might not. I've had really mixed results with uh, pretty much all the emulators across the board. But you can see it does run. And uh, it actually makes use of the uh, analog sticks and everything on the controller. Let's make some uh, bots in here and see how it actually plays. Rock Garden is the simplest. Ready, go. Okay, so yeah, I can plant bombs. I can kick them. Which is the... What, what's the button to pick them up, though? There's gotta be a button for picking up your bombs, I just can't figure out which one it is. Could be one of the triggers. Could be, um... It might even be the directional pad. I don't really have a clue, but... Oh, I'm dead. Alright. Anyway, you can see that works pretty fine. Some of these might not work, though. If you're mostly interested in Nintendo 64 games, I would suggest that you check out the uh, program Project 64. As far as emulation goes for the Nintendo 64, uh, Project 64 has been the uh, best for me, at least. Let's move on and check out some uh, Game Boy games. Yep, yeah, these, uh, these are looking fine. Game Boy Color? Yep, that's uh, sure in color. Looks just fine to me, moving on. Game Boy Advanced, let's uh, pick something at random here. Ninja Cop, let's uh, see what this is about. Oh, okay, so this is a good uh, ex example of uh, something that went wrong here. The emulator did not start at all, so... What was I using for this? I was using GPSP. That emulator must be bad. So let's go ahead and find a different one. So Game Boy Advance, instead of GPSP, let's try... Let's try this one. And it should just be a matter of... Um, going back into the game. And inst instead of GPSP, let's pick the other one. And this one works fine, so... So if you do come across emulators that just refuse to run, then you can always just simply try a different one and swap it out. This looks just fine. Moving on to the PC Engine. Counter-attack, let's try it out. I'm sure this works fine too. And uh, Turbo Graphics games. Let's see. You've got to go with Alien Crush, right? That's just a classic. Oh man, Alien Crush. I used to play this game for hours as a kid. I used to have that little uh, Turbo Graphics handheld. It was such a good little handheld gaming system. Anyway, this appears to look fine, so that will do it for Turbo Graphics. So if you do find an emulator that doesn't work, like this uh, GPSP, you can remove that emulator simply by going into your RetroArch folder, and then into Cores, and find that one, which is a uh, GPSP. 
you can go ahead and delete that right out of the folder. And now the next time you run RetroArch, it shouldn't even be an option as far as uh, running games. You see now it only shows the uh, working emulator. So that is all good and dandy. So that pretty much concludes the whole entire setup of uh, getting RetroArch up and running. I really hope you guys found this useful and maybe inspired you to uh, go out and find your own retro ROMs and reminisce about the good old days of your childhood. I hope you guys will stay tuned because uh, I think later I might do a few videos just kind of exploring these old games. I might look at some of my favorites from very long ago. I'll probably go more in depth on some of these old games that I've used to play so much of. And I think that might be a very interesting video. Anyway, I really hope you guys found this video helpful. And if you did, please consider hitting that like button and subscribing. I'd really appreciate it. And I'll catch you all later in the next episode.